Hi, I'm Nat. Um, I'm here to talk about Prescriptive Topology Daemon, which is an open source product that um, we just released from uh, Cumulus Networks. We're a network operating system startup based in Mountain View. Um, PTM was developed by Dinesh Dutt and Pradosh um, Mahapatra. Um, Dinesh is our um, chief architect, or, sorry, chief scientist, and Pradosh is one of our engineers. So we've, we've been seeing in the data center, people are going to scale out uh, the network instead of scaling up. So they're, they're putting in a lot of topper rack switches um, instead of these big chassis switches that um, pre pre were pretty typical a few years ago. Um, we're also seeing that companies are going from layer two to the topper rack to, to layer three. So now the switches in the topper rack are, are routing as well. Um, and one of the, the more recent uh, breakthroughs is people are starting to, to look at Linux more and running Linux on the switch um, instead of these, these sort of uh, siloed devices where the hardware is tied into the, to the operating system. Um, this is a pretty typical uh, spine leaf design that people are rolling out now, um, with a spine at the top, um, leaf, top of rack switches, um, and then host connected. Okay, so, so this design of having the spine leaf allows a lot of bandwidth and, and predictable performance. By having... Um, 10 gig links to the servers and say 40 gig, 440 gig links um, to the spine using ECMP is it, really predictable and allows for these um, a lot of high bandwidth east, east west, west um, um, applications that we're starting to see now in sort of web scale properties. Um, it also means that there's, there's very few single points of failure. Um, a, a whole spine can vanish and, and you, you'll know exactly what, that, what impact that will have um, on your application. Okay, so as we move to this uh, spine leaf design, um, it, could, it could become a bit of a nightmare for cabling. Um, with uh, some of these big web properties, in, instead of um, their engineers racking and stacking boxes, they're ordering rows of racks to be prefabricated elsewhere. So maybe they'll have 48 back-to-back um, -back servers um, and two top of rack switches, and they'll be prefabricated by a company and then delivered, hooked up with 232 amp powers and some fiber into the top. Um, that's all well and good, but maybe there's instances where the cabling's wrong. Um, and that can be a, a real nightmare to, um, to debug in, in, say, a data center with five or 600 racks. So the, 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 the cabling it, um, can become a nightmare as these properties grow. Um, no, normally, you'll, you'll, you'll give a design. That could be like a visual diagram with a cable reference. Um, and uh, you're ho hopefully, the people installing the kit will follow that. But that, that's not always the case. Okay, and how can we fix it? So this is one of those issues we've, we've, we've been looking at and uh, come up with a sort of a, a proposed um, solution. And um, reachability and um, unpredictable low performance can all come up. If, if, if you say you're going to rack delivered and you've got um, some of your spine and top of rack connections around the wrong way, that, that, that can be a bit of a nightmare. So this, this is where PTM comes into play. It allows us to describe the network in such a way that we can use it to to, to A, document the network, and, and B, verify the cabling. OK, so in, in this design, we've got a top of rack switch, um, a mid-spine switch, and the spine. And in the bottom, we've described how the ports are connected to one another. So by using um, PTM, we, we can verify the cabling and then have actions that, that come out of it. So if the cabling is correct, we can bring up routing adjacencies on, on demand and only bring them up if the, if the, if the cabling is as described in our design. Um, the, way, the way we've gone about this is, is to look at existing open source projects. And um, the, the one that jumped out that was ideal for this is Graphviz. Um, this is something that's, that was developed in Cambridge and has been about, about for a few years now. You can use a text file to describe the relationships between entities. So in, in this case, um, if you look at the bottom, we're saying that switch 1, S1, switch port 1 is connected to mid-spine switch, switch port 3. And by using this um, text file, we can push this out to all our devices in the network and use it to, to verify the network. And we're, we're doing that by using LLDP. So by pushing out the, the, the dot file to all our switches, we can look at the neighbor at the other end of the port. And if the neighbor is as expected, we can then bring up the, the routing on that port. This is what it looks like. So we might have um, a switch, maybe the switch runs Puppet or Chef or Ansible. Um, during the, the process over the management network, it'll, it'll get, get a copy of the topology file. Um, it's the same topology file that you push out to all your devices. You don't need to customize the file based on the device itself. 
um, by looking at the, um, the host name of the local switch um, against the host name part in the graphis, graphis file, we can work out where, which interfaces are relevant. And then we just push that file out via our orchestration platform to all the devices in the network. Um, we developed it on uh, Debian, uh, Wheezy in particular. Um, the PTMD, the daemon is written in C, and the um, control uh, command line interface uh, is written in Python. It uses a socket into LLDP. And there's two triggers that we can, um, we can kick off based on the uh, topology, either verifying or failing. So in um, etc ptmd if top pass and if top fail, uh, you can put scripts in there that get kicked off if um, the, the cabling matches or if it fails. And you can use that in terms of to maybe poke bird or quagga or bring up some, some service on the box. This doesn't necessarily have to run on the switch. You could run this on um, any Linux-based platform and have an action occur if the cabling is correct. This is how it's implemented. We've got a simple table. Um, we, we take the, the topology from the, um, the dot file, um, so we know the interface name. Then we look at LLPD to work out the neighbor on the, the particular port. Um, and then we work out the state, whether it's uh, pass or fail. And in turn, uh, various PTMD clients can have a hook, into P um, ha have a hook in, and they, they can uh, look at that status. And an example that would be something like Quagga. So here's our command line interface. Uh, in this case, um, we're expecting on switch port one, um, we're expecting me to connect it to mid spine switch one on switch port three. Um, and you can see that it's passed and the observed neighbor is exactly the same as the expected one. Um, because it's uh, graphis.file, um, I first came across this a few years ago and I was, at the time as Orca had been developed. Uh, so I wrote a pull script that looped over all my um, friends on Orca and looked at who their friends were and, and drew it out um, as a PNG. So you can use um, uh, the dots or um, Twipo interfaces to produce a PNG or a PostScript file, uh, depending on this, the status of the cabling in the data center. So in this case, um, we've, we've given it the, the topology. And on the right-hand side, you can see that the topology is passed um, because all the links are as expected, and they're all green. Um, say two links were down, the, the graphic would output would, would show um, which links in particular didn't match and then you could dispatch your operations guys just to correct uh, those switch ports. So same minute ago, we've, we've been looking at um, Quagga in particular. Um, and this comes up, say you've got a big, um, large data center, a lot of, um, lot of top of rack switches. Imagine, say, a data center with, say, 2,000 switches top of rack. Um, you you want to reduce the amount of point-to-point -point links. So you, maybe you're using uh, something like OSPF unnumbered um, interfaces over Ethernet point-to-point -to, -point to do that, where the switch would only ever have a single loopback address, and you're using that same slash 32 on every interface. Um, because it'll come up with any neighbor, uh, we can use PTMD to ensure that the neighbor at the other end of the point-to-point -point link is expected. Um, so in this case, we've got a patch for Quagga where you add PTM enabled to the top of the Quagga configuration. And then in turn, when you look at the Quagga interfaces, you can see here that switch port one only came up because the PTM state has passed and that the neighbor was expected. Um, so one thing I keep getting asked is what about interoperability? Um, and just, it just uses LRDP so that the neighbor can be any device that talks LRDP. It could be a Cisco box, a Juniper, or a Rista. Um, and routing uh, adjacencies can be managed by the device running, running PTM. So in this case here, we've got an example config um, where we've got two switches um, with the switch ports, so just switch port one to switch port one, and switch port two to switch port two. And then switch port three and four on our device are hooked up to a pro curve, um, where you just see the, the pro curve interface numbers, 21 and 22. Um, switch port five is actually connected to a Cisco device. Um, and we've got a Juniper MX480 in the mix, and just a normal um, Linux web server that's just running an LRDP daemon. You can see the ETHO and ETH1 interfaces there as well. So any device that, that can talk LLDP, you can use PTM to verify the, the cabling. So when we look in the command line out, output, you'd see here that the, um, the topology passed fully against all those neighbors. So you can debug this with something like LLDP uh, CTL to find out what the interface name is, and then the host name of the device, and just include that in the, in the dot file. Uh, we published it yesterday in a bit of a rush on GitHub. Um, so it's, it's all up there. There's, um, uh, all, all the source, so you can compile this to run on, on, on platforms. There's the C and the, 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 the Python um, command line interface as well. Um, we, we're currently looking at um, new ways of um, 
of take, taking the output of PTM and making that, that useful, so maybe plugins with Bird or something, um, and, and other ways that we can use it to, to assist with troubleshooting at the data center. Because we're st starting to build these large uh, pods of um, cloth-based uh, spine lift topologies. The, the, the cabling is becoming immense, and um, it, something, a tool, tool like this can, can really assist in debugging that. Um, have we got any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry, I've got a question. <laughs> um, uh, result, uh, uh, just reuse my. No. Oh, sorry. Rob's got a mic for you. Can you use it? So what you're basically doing is uh, discovery of the t uh, topology based on uh, LLDP and uh, uh, any other compatible stuff. Uh, so yeah, like so... C um, C CDP. Um, so uh, how would you actually get uh, the stuff which is more far from you than one hop? Uh, would you actually require connectivity to all the boxes you have on your network uh, or um, is there some propagation uh, of the information? Okay, so um, in, in um, PTM is, is only to the, to, the, to the first hop, so it just uses LRDP over the layer two segment. Um, if you want to grab all that data together, uh, so you could do something like uh, cluster SSH or MUSSH to log into all the boxes simultaneously, simultaneously um, run PTM CTL, and then pull the output back and push it into something like PTM Viz. For, for, for things that are multi-hops away, that, that's kind of not the problem that we're trying to solve at the moment. Let's chat uh, after the meeting. Okay. Thanks. Okay, um, there was a question from Dave Reader of the IRC room, okay. um, which is, um, you keep talking about routing not being brought up. Does this also stop layer two forwarding until the loop is validated? Um, not layer two, for, uh, layer two forwarding will still take place. This is the, um, the in this scenario that we're looking at is like bringing up two two boxes running RSPF um, between between the two of them in the data center, not um, not not for, uh, blocking layer two forwarding. Thank you. Oh, wait, Ivan, no. Um, can you? Yeah. Can you dewire your microphone yeah. when, when you're done with the question? Okay, sorry. Um, Ivan Beveridge, Live Journal. Um, does this um, does this need to run on um, the switches, did you say? And if so, um, which switches have you uh, been running it on? Okay, so in, um, a lot of people might know that we develop an operating system, a Linux operating system that runs on multiple vendor switches, so this, this runs on our switches. Um, but because it's just a, a Linux package, you, you could run it on uh, a, any device in the network that, that, that you could bring up this C binary and, and be able to use LLT, LLDPD. So if you've got Linux firewalls, is, firewalls or maybe you've got um, hosts that have got two, two network interfaces, that is connecting to different to top of rack switches, and you've got a management interface as well. So you could use, you could put PTM on the hosts as well to verify the top of rack switches that they're connected to. Thank you. Okay. Okay, um, it's Dave Friedman again. Dave Friedman from Clark. One very quick question. Um, LLDP hosts, I just loaded the PDF and searched for the word security, and I didn't find it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, people would need to evaluate that themselves, really. Um, and we've seen a lot of people maybe in the, some of these, um, these larger properties where, where they might be running virtualization into the, into the host. So um, things like NICERA or something over the top. So, so the, the, the actual layer-free network has got an overlay on it, um, which, which can protect around things like that. But I, I suggest people look into that a lot more. Do you have an implementation that uses CDP? <laughs> Not at the moment. That, but, that, but the that wasn't on, a serious question. No, but the source is on GitHub, so fork it. <laughs> okay, thank you. No, okay. That's good. Okay, thank you. That. Okay.